Okay, we got a nice case study here. This is a 2003 Chrysler 300, and the complaint is the ABS light and traction control light are on. So we pulled trouble codes out of it already. I'll get you zoomed in on the codes. All right, you can see we have a code 12 and a code 13, both of those pointing toward the right front speed sensor circuit. So when you have an ABS speed sensor that fails, it's going to set the ABS light. <clears throat> traction control system is based on the ABS system, so that light's going to come on too. These are both related. The traction control light and ABS light would be related. We're going to go after this right front wheel speed sensor. Okay, next step we're going to do is we have the wheel speed sensors graphed on the scan tool. Um, I have the car up in the air already. I'm just going to spin each wheel and we're going to look at the result of the scan data. This is the left front first. Pretty tough to spin that left front wheel, but you see a change. This is the left rear. Got a nice change on the left rear. A lot easier to spin those back tires. Front wheel drive. Right rear. And then my right front, the one we got a trouble coat on. Spinning the right front wheel right now. Got no changes at all on the right front. So, a nice, quick, and easy test for using scan data. Right front definitely has no signal. We're going to go to the sensor next. Okay, next thing I'm going to do because I have a tool that provides me with this information, I'm going to go to some component tests and find out a little bit about this speed sensor. And what we find is that. This is a digital type ABS wheel speed sensor. So this is information that is supplied by either the Vantage Pro or the Varus. This is a nice feature of the snap-on. I wasn't expecting this. I thought it was going to be an AC sine wave type wheel speed sensor where it creates its own voltage. And this one is more along the lines of a Hall effect type that it actually has a supply voltage. This is unlike a variable reluctance sensor. It's got a supply and a signal. So that's good to know. The signature of this, what's the waveform supposed to look like? It's gonna be a square wave. So that's a little unexpected. This is gonna be a Hall Effect type ABS wheel speed sensor test for the rest of the way through this. And what we're gonna have is a, is a supply voltage, positive voltage, should be near battery voltage, and we should have a signal that is a square wave. And according to this, we should have roughly one and a half to two volt square wave on this ABS speed sensor. One and a half to two volts. So I'm gonna go out of here. We're gonna go just using the regular scope, just my preference. My scope is set up. We'll start on a 20 volt because I wanna see that feed wire first. So we'll watch the, the channel here and I'll show you where I'm connected. I'll get you back on the scope here in a sec. Okay, so this right front speed sensor, the connector is actually in the wheel well area. So I'm back actually by the steering rack. There's a two pin connector and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna back probe these two wires. I'm not gonna focus you here the rest of the way. I'll keep you on the scope for what I'm doing. Some of the tests I might show, but I'm gonna show you the two wires on this speed sensor. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shift gears here. I'm gonna to go to the left front first because the left front has a known good working sensor. We're gonna do that one for some good pictures and we'll come back over here to the right front. Okay, what I'm gonna do before we check this right front speed sensor directly, I'm gonna check the left front one first so we get a known good one. And my connector's actually in the wheel well area here and I'm just back probing this two pin connector. So the bottom wire is my first one and I'll stay focused on the scope the rest of the way, show you both wires for this speed sensor circuit. Okay, this is the first of the two wires. You can see we have 
six, seven volts on this. That's gonna be our feed circuit. I don't know the theory behind what the voltage feed should be. This is a known good working circuit, so I'm gonna say that that is a good power feed. Remember, the left front didn't have a problem. We use this as a comparator for the right front. So we have 10 volts. I'm gonna move the wheel. We'll take a look at that signal, see if it changes at all. Looks like we have a little bit of up-down oscillations as I move the wheel. I'm gonna to go to the other wire next. Okay, this is my other wire. This is gonna be the signal wire. I'm gonna actually change my voltage scales now to give you a little bit better view of this. I'll drop this down to five. And what we're looking at right now is a 1.6 volt flat line. Now I'm gonna turn the wheel, take a look at this. As I move the wheel, you can see we have a square wave of a specific frequency. Very tough to move this front wheel with it being a front wheel drive car, but you can see the on off square waves. The tool said it was a volt and a half to two volts. We're actually off on that a little bit. We're at 1.6 on the peak and 0.8 in the valley. So the numbers are off a little bit, but remember this left front is a known good sensor. So the nice thing about this is we can have a known good sensor that we can compare to when we're doing tests on a bad one. So my next thought process on this, this being a square wave, is I wanna know if this is a pull up or pull down design circuit. And it's as simple as unplugging the sensor and measuring the voltage with the sensor unplugged on the signal wire. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna reach down and unplug this sensor. Okay, that is sensor unplugged. We have zero volts on that circuit. So now I know circuit design here. We send a power, power feed into this sensor and the sensor produces the square wave and sends it to the computer in a pull up fashion. This is a pull up design circuit. Unplugged, no voltage on the signal wire on a known good circuit, definitely a pull up design. Okay, again, still on this left front. This is a known good circuit. I'm gonna throw in a hypothetical here. Let's say we get this car in and it has a good 10 volt feed and the signal wire is at zero volts. Looks like a faulty sensor. Before we put a sensor in this, you better make sure that the signal wire isn't shorted to ground or that there are no opens in the circuit. Knowing this is a pull up design, an open really isn't a concern because we'd have around a volt and a half coming from this sensor. We're worried about a short to ground. So what I wanna do is I wanna do a bypass test. And a bypass test on a pull up design circuit involves connecting a test light to battery positive and touching on and off the signal wire and producing a similar on off type square wave to the computer and see if it reacts to it. So I'm gonna go back to the scan tool and show you the graph. I have my test light connected to battery positive. That same T pin that I showed you guys before where I'm connected on this left front speed sensor, I'm gonna to touch this test light on and off this T-pin. And we're gonna watch the scan tool mile per hour. And what we wanna see is we wanna see the left front change it. And we do. And so that is a bypass test and that shows you if circuit integrity is good from the sensor all the way to the computer. Okay, I want to show another way this can be done before we go to the right front sensor. Let's go back to my scope. I'm going to plug this back in and show you a different way to bypass this. I know some of you might not like using the test light to 12 volts because it's only a one and a half volt circuit. I'm okay with it. Some of you might not be. So I'm going to show you another method, but this method isn't always going to work because if your sensor shorted out pulling this to ground, then you're not going to be able to use this method. This being a good sensor, we can do it. So you see sensor plugged in, we got 1.6 volts. I'm going to take a test light to ground this time, touch it on and off of this signal and look for this square wave. But we want to see the computer update it. I'll show you the square wave first. So this might be for 
for you guys that don't like the 12 volt one being this is a low voltage circuit pulling the circuit up we'll pull it down this time we'll make the same signal you see on the scan tool that we have a mile per hour change it's tough to get the frequencies right to even set it to one mile per hour and that's the difficulty I'm having there this actually had a 140 mile per hour spike there this is from all the on off oscillations but you can see you can do the same bypass test pulling it to ground if you have good signal circuit voltage now if that voltage is at zero from a sorted sensor you have to unplug it and do the other one the pull up design so go into the right front now okay I'm on my right front speed sensor now looking at my first of the two wires I'm reading 10.6 volts that's the feed circuit I'm pretty sure that's the same we had as the left front I'm gonna move this over to the signal wire now okay this is the second of the two wires this is my signal wire I'm reading 1.6 volts on this circuit so that's the same as what the left front was reading I'm gonna spin the wheel now and show you what this looks like see if we have a square wave on here I'm moving the wheel you see we have no signal at all now know in circuit design that this sensor is actually producing this voltage of 1.6 volts we could actually have an open in the circuit between the sensor and computer that would prevent the computer from reading a mile per hour on the scan tool but the thing is if that was the case we'd still have a signal on the scope and we don't so an open's not a concern but I want to show you this bypass test anyway and I'm going to do the one where I put the test light to ground and I'm going to make the square wave on this on this right front speed sensor I'll show it to you here first then we'll go to the scan tool and do it so you can see the change so test light to ground touching on and off of the signal making a square wave go to the scan tool what we want to see is a mile per hour change there it is right there I'll show it to you again on off with this test light very rapidly we see a mile per hour change so we know for sure that our signal circuits good from the sensor to the computer no question about it this is a faulty speed sensor last steps in this process are going to be do a visual inspection on the tone ring and on the air gap of the sensor itself and make sure those are there and I'll show you that real quick and then we'll call right front speed sensor okay a little bit of a tough shot here you see the tone rings right right in this area right here and as the axle turns that's going to induce that voltage change in this speed sensor which is actually sitting right here and what we noticed is the air gap on this side is actually a little bit more than the left front and something else that's interesting too is this thing's loose you see the sensor actually moves now this thing just had a wheel bearing put in it but this wasn't taken apart and the issue we have is this pinch bolt up here is actually tight and will not move probably probably going to snap so I don't like this this looseness here and my suspicion is there's rust under this hub and it's actually lifting the sensor up a little bit we're still gonna put a sensor in it and we're gonna clean the hub face and probably hopefully get this bolt out without snapping it um, but let me get you a shot of the left front and you'll see the difference maybe in the air gap here. So air gap's always an issue. You always want to inspect the tone ring too and make sure that it exists. Make sure there's no cracks in it and things like that. Now a crack in a tone ring would give you a signal but it would be erratic. Uh, so we were just more concerned is it there. But definitely see some, some issue with that sensor mounting. Uh, it might be you know worth cleaning it up and trying to put it back in there before replacing the sensor but I'm not going to be here for that part so I think the bypass testing was cool to show and that was my main issue is showing how to troubleshoot one of these and be confident that it's a sensor problem so um, truthfully that's that's good enough let me get you one quick shot on the on the left front show you this air gap okay this is the left front and I got to tell you, after looking at this again, there's a huge difference in air gap there. And I really think after seeing this air gap difference, before we put a $200 sensor in this thing or whatever this sensor costs, I definitely want 
this thing taken out, cleaned up, and see if we can tighten this thing down and find out why it's loose. Now that bolt will not turn, so we gotta take the wheel off, maybe heat it, and now that heat itself might ruin the sensor. We have an air gap issue here, man. I'm gonna come back and look at the, the uh, right front one more time. Okay, back on this right front. Definitely, definitely an air gap problem there that I think needs to be corrected would be worth attempting to correct before putting a couple hundred dollar sensor in this and we shouldn't we shouldn't be able to move this thing so um, it could be as simple as a loose bolt that's now galled and frozen and just needs tightened up but that needs to be corrected before replacing the sensor and again unfortunately I'm not going to be here for that part uh, hopefully you guys understand what we did we checked a hall effect wheel speed sensor I showed how to address wiring problems we found out that they are pull up design circuits that they use a power feed and you know I don't know for sure if there's a ground on these it's a plastic housing so I'm, I always thought they were grounded on the sensor itself I'm not thinking that's the case uh, they must use some type of uh, transistor and a resistor that just simply switches the feed circuit into the signal circuit is my guess. So I, I don't see a ground here at all. Um, you know, one of you guys can correct me on that, but very similar to checking other types of Hall effects. Circuit, signal circuit designs, either pull up or pull down. These are pull up design on these Chryslers. And uh, to review again, if you get one of these in and your signal's fixed at zero, you can unplug the sensor and you can pull it up with a test light's battery positive. If you're fixed at 1.6 like we were here, you can take that signal, pull it to ground with your test light. In both cases, you'll make a square wave, and in both cases, you saw the computer react. Now, one last comment was, when I unplugged the left front sensor, I set a trouble code, and when I was doing my bypass testing, it wouldn't react on the scan tool for a little bit. And then I cleared the codes, and then I had my reaction. So. You know, my favorite bypass type testing has some variables, and I think one of the variables, which I was not able to show, was that with a hard fault on that left front, it said circuit failure code, it wouldn't update the scan data parameter. So be aware of that. When you're looking at mile per hour changes on the scan tool, you may need to clear the trouble codes for that data PID to update. And that's what I saw. I wasn't able to recreate that to show you, but just be careful when you're doing this type of testing. If you don't like the bypass tests, then what you're gonna have to do is unplug the computer, unplug the sensor, and do ohm checks on the wires before putting the sensor in. And this is about being 100% accurate. We don't want to guess when it comes to a $200 sensor. We wanna be 100% accurate that our wiring is good, and I've shown you methods where you can address that on this design.